And Lieutenant Cherry says, Men, I want all of you to meet Lieutenant Johnson. This is Cliff Johnson, Lieutenant Cliff Johnson. Uh, Lieutenant Cliff Johnson is going to be my exec. You guys got any gripes, any problems? Lieutenant Johnson will take care of them. Lieutenant Johnson is the new executive officer. Johnson, I'm going to turn the platoon, uh, turn the company over to you right now. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to say to the boys, go right ahead. Well, we stood there, and that instant, without a word being spoken, 276 guys immediately recognized the enemy. Immediately we recognized, here's a patsy. <laughs> and he stood up, and he says, all right, man, attention. And we all stand up, making, right away, it, it had already started. You could see guys leaning backwards vaguely, some guys with their stomachs sticking out, even under their, under their wrinkles, other guys are lynching. Men, I want to say this. You guys play ball with me, I'll play ball with you. Nobody who's ever known in the past, who's ever been in any outfits that I've ever been in, has known that you play fair with me, I'll play fair with you. Oh, boy, what cliches. This guy's coming out with every old canard and clinker in the book, and I can hear guys right behind me. We're going to make this into the best damn outfit in the whole damn army. Yeah, men, we're going to make this into the best damn outfit, into the best damn... <laughs> goes like that. <laughs> so, already, you know, the poor guy is, is about ten yards behind his own goal line and about to fumble, only he doesn't know what you say. <laughs> well... <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, fifteen minutes later, the whistles start to blow, and Lieutenant Johnson is going to have his first big formation. And Lieutenant Johnson has us all lined up out there between the latrine and the orderly room. When the first movement started to happen, he is standing there and it's raining yet. You know, he says, "All right, man. Lieutenant Cherry and I have discussed the question of drill." And we have decided that this outfit needs a little more close order drill. I know a lot of you are going to have plenty of gripes. And it's going to rain down, and everybody is standing there absolutely stony faced, just looking out. A lot of you are going to have gripes, but we're in this war to win this war. This guy is fresh out of VMI. You can see it, you know, he's about nine days out of his, of his uh, sociology three classes. We are in this war to win this war, and we're going now to the drill field, and we are going to drill until I am satisfied. Attach up. All right, face. All right, heart. Rain is coming. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see out of this, this great herd of bumping up and down green helmets, bumping up and down green raincoats and bumping up and down green gas masks, this great herd of mushroom. Plum, plum, plum. Suddenly, one guy's head goes whoop, whoop, straight up in the air. There's a trick you do that you roll up on the ball of your arch and you just go straight up without missing a beat. Whoop, whoop. Plum, plum. Lieutenant Johnson looks over there and it's up. Whoop, whoop. Another head goes up. He can't stop. Whoop, whoop, like that. Ah, company, oh. Left, hey! Rain comes down. I don't know what kind of an outfit this this gang is used to being, but we are going to make this the best damned outfit in the best damned army. <laughs> He's standing there. All right, now I don't want any more fooling around. I have the authority of Lieutenant Cherry to break any man in this outfit. You understand? <laughs> you understand? He's talking to about he's talking to about about two hundred and sixty of the most grizzled, hardened, totally cynical privates that you ever saw in your life, peopled with about nine corporals who couldn't have cared less about getting busted. He didn't write you know. Somehow that always uh, that always makes an officer think that scares you right out of your shoes getting busted. You know, bust busted, busted. So, all right. Come there, three, three. Right face, forward, heart! Well, from that day on, it continued. Every time Johnson got us out, little things, little niggling things, heads popping out, guys dropping <laughs> raincoats out of their back, guys dropping. I, I'll never forget the time he hollers, 
Gas! Gas! We're out running, you know, gas. He's hollering gas. Well, there was a rule in the Army that when you had... You, one thing you could never do was to keep anything extraneous, extraneous at all, in your gas mask. That's what rule. Gas! Gas! Again, it's raining. You see all these guys with the helmets and all with rain. Gas! You see candy bars, apples, footballs. <laughs> Things I can't even describe. All kinds of sandwiches, pickles, everything is flying up. And he's looking, he sees all the groceries bouncing around in the cans and stuff. Oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. Boy, that time we all got our gas masks on, standing there with the big goggles looking. <laughs> Poor old Lieutenant Johnson. I, I never forget that. Then the final thing came. When Johnson had us out in the rain, I think I told you this story. This is always raining. This was, it was raining 24 hours a day. And it was raining, raining, raining. And Johnson had us out in the rain, and he was, oh, boy, he was, oh, boy, he was bugged. We were nothing at all like the platoon that he had at VMI, you know, <laughs> the underclassmen. Nothing like the crowd that he had at OCS. All of a sudden, these are rotten soldiers. Haven't been overseas, you know. They, they, I mean, they, they, they knew the story. So we are out running along a gravel road. And this nut had an idea. What he was going to do was to get everybody to run and have a gas attack at the same time. Have you ever tried to breathe through a gas mask running <laughs> at, at top speed in the rain in a GI raincoat? Well, I'll tell you. You think isometric exercises are great. You ought to try this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so old Johnson, he's really got us. He, he gets on. He goes, oh, my God! Gas! 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 Yes, gas! He's yelling, see, gas, gas, you know, gas for crying. Gas. Oh, we've been getting this gas from him for years. Gas, gas! So, all right, we put, blah, 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 we put on the gas mask, and, and we're still slogging along. We got our rifles are hitting us on the back of the head and the canteens and junk. And then with that, he hollers, double time! Double time! We're running, and then we got the gas. Shoo, the sweat is coming down, and your earballs are popping, you know. Your eyes are sweating. Well, about that time, I hear the first one. <laughs> you hear this wild chicken coming out of this crowd of gas masks. <laughs> it's wild, wild, what's going on? And somebody hollers, Lieutenant Johnson is a freak. <laughs> With that, the whole company is yelling stuff behind their gas masks. You couldn't see anything. And we go running past another company that is going in the opposite direction with a very official looking Lieutenant Colonel. <laughs> With that, I thought that I think. <laughs> Ooh. He turns and he stops. He says, all right. At ease. At ease, man. And he's standing there and his gas mask is hanging at half mast. <laughs> he's just sort of sweating. <laughs> he's a big son of a gun. And we're all standing here looking very innocent in our gas masks there. Oh, by the way, another thing. There wasn't a single guy, had we been gassed in that company, Eddie would have lasted for more than 10 seconds. Each one of us had taken the filter out of the cone, out of the nose cone, you see, because you can't breathe in a gas mask with the filter in it. We had just taken that, thrown that out years ago. So our gas masks were just sheer, you know. So, so we're all standing there with our gas masks and the candy bars falling again, and everybody's wet. They're sweating through their raincoats. And, and there's a great, a fantastic, it must have been like Farkas. There's a great feeling of total victory. So standing there. He, we knew he was on the run. And poor old Johnson is saying, all right, now. You know who that man was that just went past us? That was the battalion colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Watson. If, oh, oh, well, now, uh, raise face, forward, march. And we go marching away. Well, two days later, Lieutenant Johnson is transferred. Lieutenant Cherry, the afternoon that poor old Johnson left in the Jeep, I'll never forget the afternoon they left because the rumor is out immediately. The word comes from the from the from the orderly room, the corporal who's under Hey, hey, he's been transferred, he got his orders, you know. I don't know now, uh, you know, oh, yeah, oh boy. Yeah, on the second airport, oh boy, they're giving it to him. <laughs> and so immediately you see everybody's out there watching, sneaking and looking out of the barracks. And sure enough, you see poor old Johnson coming out of the orderly room. He's got his big envelope under his arm, you know, and he's shaking hands with, with Lieutenant Cherry, and he's wearing his dress uniform, and there's a jeep with his barracks bags. He's leaving the BLQ. And he's just, uh, somebody goes, hey, so long, Lieutenant.